Yeah. Are you ready for a big schmooze? Mm -hmm. That's what we got here today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is Aloha United We Stand, which means that we bring in one of the agencies that deals with, gets benefic benefits from Aloha United Way. And today it's the Waikiki uh, Community Center, which has uh, been there since 12, the, the year 1215. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the uh, the president of the Waikiki uh, Community Center, uh, Carolyn Hayashi. Uh, welcome to the show, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Nice to have you here. Nice to be able to talk about the Waikiki Community Center. And next to her is um, Merle, um, Merle Okino O'Neill, and she is the chair of uh, or director of programs of Thriving After 50, which is one of the programs that operates out of the Waikiki Community Center. That's correct. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And finally, we have our model. We always have to have a model. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about schmoozing, yeah. <laughs> we have Marsha Joyner, who is, uh, what, the, 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 the dire director? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't She's know, a contributor, and, I'm participant. A contributor and a participant. Contributor and a participant and of I that same program. And, and, after and, after and, after and I am after 50. thriving after 50. And yes. you are. Yes. I know that yes. because I spent a few minutes with you. Guys. Yes. <laughs> you, are, you are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we There's having a fun yet? Well, <laughs> let's talk about the Waikiki yeah. Community Center, what it does in general, mm -hmm. and what role it plays in Waikiki and in the larger community. Sure. So. Waikiki Community Center is actually the only community center um, in Waikiki, and we serve a very wide range of, of groups. Um, our focus is on kupuna, our kupuna and our kiki. And um, for the kupuna, over 30% of residents in Waikiki are 60 and over. And a great many of those are living without ideal supports um, no family or close friends around. So the center is kind of a touchstone and a support place for them. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing we do are is they disadvantaged? We, um, not all of them, but many of them are. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, many of them are on limited incomes. A, a um, footnote, can I make a yes. footnote? I'd like to make a footnote yes. comment. Sometimes I, you know. <clears throat> okay, Waikiki Community Center is very important to Waikiki because, you, you know, it's, it's, it's the engine of our economy, it's tourism. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you have to, you know, retain the social structure of Waikiki yes. and the social safety net of Waikiki. Yes. And you guys do that. You do that yes. in a marvelous way. You've done it for a long time. That's my, my joke about the year 1215. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually our 38th year. 38th year. Okay, very important. Yes. And, um, you know, uh, I, the other thing I wanted to just make a digressionary point mm -hmm. about is that people think that Waikiki is just a bunch of hotels and restaurants and mm -hmm. shops. It's not true. There are real people living in yes, Waikiki. Right. It actually is a community. Have and they hung on residents. all these years. They still live there yes, now. Yes. <laughs> we actually have, and the reason we have such a large, which is the largest in the state, and I would say probably one of the largest um, senior populations in the nation, is because it, we do have a lot of um, residents that's been living, that have been living in their same apartments for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. So um, a lot of what's happening now is they're getting as buildings are turning over and units are turning over, they're, they're kind of getting pushed out of their long-time the residence. Right word, yeah. is, and so we, that's part of what we, um, we help our seniors with in the area. When they get pushed out, do you help them find a location in, in, still in been, Waikiki? We have been, yes, because yeah. that's in, and, um, they want to stay in Waikiki, so if at all possible, we, we, uh, we help them to stay in Waikiki. Yeah. Because their friends are in not. Waikiki. Yeah. Right. Why and, would they leave Waikiki? And actually, their Waikiki community. Yeah. is a good place for seniors because you don't need to drive. There's a, the buses are very convenient. Um, it's a walkable area. There's um, a lot of amenities and stores nearby, so it's actually mm -hmm. a good area. Okay. What other programs do you so do? So the other, the other main program we have is we, we have a preschool that targets uh, low-income families. And um, the other kind of statistic about Waikiki is that there are many of our families that reside in Waikiki have children five and under and are low income. Oh. And so um, these two programs, the, our Kupuna and our Kiki, those are the two programs we started with 38 years ago. And um, although our board and our staff has been open to changing what we do, um, the demand and need um, as, as um, 
kind of demonstrated by both the amount of participation we have as well as data that has come out, um, new data, continue to kind of um, verify the, the need for these two groups to be served. So and you make it possible for a lot of people to work. They exactly. wouldn't be able to work, and there are jobs exactly. there virtually across the yes. street, but they're not going to be able to work unless somebody can take care of their kids. Yes, right. and as we all know, I mean, um, child care is extremely expensive, yeah. and there are a lot of studies in the early childhood area that the, the, one, the, one of the very few things that can close the gap between children, the academic achievement gap between children from lower and higher income families is quality early childhood education. Mm -hmm. so, now you're a nonprofit. You're funded by yes. various people who give contributions to you as a nonprofit. Yeah. Yes, so we're a 501c3 and um, a lot of people think that we might be a state um, arm or agency because we're a community center, but we actually are a private nonprofit. Uh, we do lease our facility from the state, but we're responsible for all the um, expenses of maintaining it and fixing it um, that come up. Oh, yeah. Yes, and we are supported by private donations, by foundations. Including um, Aloha United Way. I yes, think. Exactly. including Aloha United Way. So um, Aloha United Way has been a, a great um, supporter of ours, especially as it relates to our um, senior program. Yeah. And um, I guess we can talk a little bit yeah, more. Well, I'll about talk about your facility, then I want to sure. get to the really sure. you know, delicious part of this sure. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> The facility, you have a, this, this nice building in the heart of what I used to call, I won't call it anymore, but I used to call it the jungle. Right, yes. <laughs> right. We used to call it the we jungle. Were, we remember the jungle. You know, we have an old photo of a wooden building that was on our property that says the jungle on it. <laughs> Is that really? I should have got that photo. It's a great photo. Huh? And then in the evening, you could actually hear the lions and the, the, right. the that's where Those the name the came days. from yeah because you could oh, actually hear I didn't know yeah that. you could actually hear them great. yeah well it's not that anymore <laughs> it's not the concrete jungle now but, but now it's a nice hollow tile building yes. it's uh, i remember it to be um, one single big room mm -hmm. and you could do anything in there yeah so it was um saint augustine's <coughs> catholic school and the state bought it during the ariyoshi years and um they wanted it to be kind of a one-stop shop service center for nonprofits. So Waikiki Community Center ended up taking the master lease with the state. And we also have seven other nonprofits on the property that oh, help that us right? to kind of have a whole um, kind of group of services for people. You used to have a minister who ran the place uh, back, back a few years ago, but it's not associated with any particular church, it's is it? It's not, although we have two spiritual-based um, ministries that um, are that lease space from us for their offices and have and rent space for their services on mm -hmm. Sunday. Okay. So it's Waikiki, um, Hope Chapel Waikiki and Waikiki Beach Chapel. Okay, so yeah. the, the building is busy a good part of it. It is. Time. We actually have three buildings. And one building is almost um, exclusively kind of used by Waikiki Health, who is one of our That's biggest right. partners. It's a little qu yeah. so quadrangle kind of affair. Three buildings, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And the Waikiki Health Center is very important, too. Oh, critical for, for services that are provided by the center, and we yeah. um, have share a lot of the same clients, yes. Okay, so you see, that's what we got. That's what we got in Waikiki, the Waikiki uh, Community Center. It's a, a really a community center with real legs on it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a defined as such. It functions as such. And this is one of the programs, an important one program, yes. the Kapuna program. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, let's talk to you first, Marsha. No, Meryl. 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 Let's talk to you first. And tell us about the program. How does it work? Um, I, I should put a, uh, an umbrella on the program. We were fortunate to be funded by Aloha United Way as part of their poverty prevention uh, program. Um, of course, our program is basically focused on active seniors, keeping seniors as active for as long as possible in order to prevent um, any further need for what is called long-term health services. Another way of saying it is to extend the expectancy of active living. Sure, you know, and this is, this is all really for people who are 
aging in place, aging in grace, I call it. Yes. Uh, in their in their uh, traditional home, their condo, whatever it is. Right. They're still there. They're right. They're not in any care home anywhere else. They're right there in the community. Exactly. And you want them to stay there. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and the other thing that we want our program to do is to change the image of aging to one of opportunities rather than limitation, to one of assets versus deficits. So this is why we call it Thriving After 50. Um, the program is actually constructed on, <coughs> on several building blocks. So what I'm gonna show you is kind of a model. I had to put the blocks together. So this, this base, this I was base wondering. the base foundation is based on a theory of well-being. Mm -hmm and I'll get further into it. The secondary foundation, the next part of the foundation is based on successful aging. And then there is the three components of our program, which is thriving after 50. Can you come for a close up on this? We wanna... And then yeah. the end outcome is that we have an individual that, or individuals that successfully age. So if we take the model apart and look at this piece called the theory of wellness, um, psychologists for years and years and years now have studied this area called positive psychology. And what they have identified are five elements of an individual that is thriving. And those five elements are positive emotions, what we generally call happiness and life satisfaction, engagement, meaningful relationships, meaning, meaningful activities, and achievement. Now, in all of our programs, so that's an overarching kind of um, theory that we use when we develop all of our programs. And I have to say that um, uh, this is the first year of this program. And so we're moving into what, an existing model and adding enhancements in order to add these elements and making people recognize that these elements exist in every program that they participate in. And by doing that, what happens is the result is that they begin to experience the qualities of thriving. So that's, that's the kind of the, you know, the thinking behind okay. it. Okay, well, uh, that's philosophical. Right. Aspirational, but how do you do it? Okay. <laughs> the reason you, you why, were tell me anyway. yeah, I, the reason why we chose this particular theory is because all of the all of the elements are measurable. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that answers your question, right? So the second layer is what we call successful aging, and so um, successful aging um, is a conversation that has been around for a very long time. And basically what the three components of successful aging is engagement with life, right? High cognitive and physical function and the avoidance of disease and disability. So that's the second component. Which now you're gonna- Which one is that, the blue? The blue block. The blue. Okay. okay. Can we see the blue block? That the blue block. Yeah, got it. You give us a review again of the, what, what these blocks mean. Okay, the first one is the theory of well-being. Okay. Okay, all five elements okay. are part of the characteristic of an individual that is thriving. Okay. Okay, this is any individual regardless of age. But How do you this do that? particular, I'll, I'll tell you about that. This particular program is designed to include the elements in everything that we do. Successful aging is how we see, you know, how do we, how do we get people engaged? How, how do we uh, address the thing called high cognitive and physical function? How do we avoid disease and disability? Okay, and then these three blocks represent the components of the Thriving After 50 program, which is employment, second is volunteerism, and thirdly, civic engagement. And they are on top because you need the ones on the bottom to do the ones on the top. Exactly. Theoretical, measurable, and you know, outcomes, and then the actual doingness. Okay? So our, our um, vision is that after participating in, in our programs, what will happen is that we will have a thriving senior, right? Happiness. Okay. I mean, the uh, well-being theory up to the up to the thriving senior. Okay. So, your question is. How do you do that? How do we do that? 
I'm okay. interested because I'm getting there. <laughs> Some people think I'm there already. <laughs> How do we do that? Um, currently, um, when we look at the continuum of our population, um, we have services that help, that support individuals in need, right? All the way to our, our actively thriving individuals. So Marsha is our actively thriving model, and she'll tell you more about it as she talks about this green component called civic engagement. We have tours, lectures, uh -huh. programs, Keep entertainment. Keep them yes, active. Yes, and they get to pick and choose just like a buffet, yeah. you know, of what they feel like they want to do. Yeah. Uh, we have exercise programs that address the whole physical, mental... And all this is through and and from the uh, Waikiki yes, that's right. Community Center. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. We have lectures on um, nutrition, preparing, you know, preparing all of your personal... How many personal active members do you have? Um, over 500, I 500 would say. 500 kupuna. Yeah. Who actually are technically members, which means we have a, we have a small um, annual fee that you, would, you, know, you get paid activities um, less expensively. But I would say the, um, the number of people that actually participate in all these programs throughout the year um, exceeds five or 6,000. Okay, do they pay yeah. something in? Some of the activities have a nominal fee. Oh, but it's the cost of, of the activity. Don't. Yes. Yeah. It's not the cost of joining or anything. No, but there are there is a cost to joining, which is $30. $30 a year? A year. For a kapuna. Thirty dollars. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's that's not too bad. It's cheaper than a bus pass. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's about two and a half a month. Two and a half dollars a month. Speaking of joining, <laughs> <laughs> can we talk to the original joiner here? Yes. <laughs> you yes. joined. What what makes it what makes it interesting for you? What makes you a contributor and a participant? I am, uh, by definition, a political junkie. <laughs> Okay. They can't have an election. We, we have a lot of those here at this table. Yeah. <laughs> can't have an election without me, and I uh, have not missed an election since 1958. <laughs> and uh, I have worked every election, uh, primary and general, since 1972. Wow. And I will work again this year. Well, so, Marcia, can you take your glasses off? You're yeah. Such a good-looking woman. I want to no, I was show squinting. our audience I was what we have here. In this, <laughs> yeah. No. And so what we are doing with this program is what we're calling participatory democracy. And we are introducing our members, our, whoever comes, uh, to how democracy works. We went on a tour of the city with the city council, the mayor, the managing Wonderful. director, all of those people, met Wonderful. everybody, yeah. talked to them how a bill becomes a law. And uh, then we went to we the went legislature to, uh -huh. and met lots of people. And they're and very agreeable. And you know, you know why? Because Kupuna, in general, are old enough to, to vote. vote. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and as luck would have it, we had uh, one of the executives from Maui County, and he looked at all these white hair people, and he said, you know, whenever legislators look at white hair, they get scared. <laughs> Because they know those people vote. They know they will turn out. And they talk to each other. And they talk to each other. So we are starting a project that we will work beginning uh, tomorrow. Well, yeah, beginning tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Um, but you're, and about the legislature and uh, working with the legislature, how a bill becomes law. They will learn how to write a bill, how to follow the bill how to move it around, meet all of the legislators, and do all of the things and that scared the bejesus out of the, the, <laughs> the legislators. And when I was quite young, I went, we lived in Makakilo and there was no fire station, because Makakilo was brand new. So I just, and the fire truck had to come up from Barbara's Point. Makakilo was about that big at the time. And so, I decided we needed a fire station, so I took my baby and we went, drove all the way to town to the city council. And I introduced and said, I want a fire station, not knowing a thing. So I sat next to this lovely, lovely lady with the pretty pink suit and the white hair, you, you know the look. And 
uh, she was from the outdoor circle. And I said, well, how is it that you get everything you want and so many other people get nothing? And she said, because we're here. They don't cut people that watch them. We're here. I said, oh, okay. So after that, I bundled up my children, and every day we drove every day to town, and we sat there and watched them, <laughs> and now we have a fire station. <laughs> that's a great oh, story, Martha. I said, if that's all I have to do is show up? And she said, yes. That's, that's it? She so said, yes. So you guys talk about modern Real current stuff. politics. Yeah. I mean, has anybody in the group of, what, 500 or so? Mm -hmm. Uh, ever expressed an opinion, for example, about Donald uh, Trump? We, uh, I'm sure they have. Uh, we try not to be uh, partisan. quote partisan. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we try it's not to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are people. You think they're going to vote for him? I am. I I, I don't know. I don't. I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I, don't know. I I have not a clue. Of that, that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> I really want to stay with our own legislators mm -hmm. and our own city council people, the ones that we in Hawaii, I think, now I'm not sure, but I think we're the only state where every elected official's telephone number is listed. Their doors are not locked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you can meet them and get to know them. Yeah. And that is such a plus that you get to meet real people. Well, this is built on the notion, I get, you know, your organization, so this program, uh, is that it's better to, to age in place. It's better to be right. home. Yes, exactly. It's better to have friends. It's better to have a gathering place, which the Waikiki Community Center provides yes. for them, which is a real mitzvah. It means good deed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's better to stay active. And the more active, the better. As much action as you can possibly tolerate. Just keep on offering the smorgasbord. Yeah. What is it called? Buffet. I call buffet. it a smorgasbord. Yeah. 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 And if they can keep up with me, then we're. And if they can keep up with Marsha, they're <laughs> old. And if they can keep up with me, <laughs> then we've got a winner. We've got a winner. We've got a winner. We got a winner. We got a winner. I think that's another important element. You've got to have energy. You've got right. to have leadership. Yeah. Right. You've got to demonstrate, yeah. you know, leading by example. Exactly. Yeah, we can do this kind. And um, I think that that's, sounds like what you offer. I want to. We I, are, are pleased to have this opportunity, the facility, the people that want to do, that we can, uh, that they can offer all kinds, all sorts of programs that you don't have to take just one. Yeah. You can take them all if you want. Or Are there other organizations in the community like this, you know, for Kupuna, that are like you guys? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, there's I haven't other, heard of them. There's other you know? community centers that yeah. we all do kind of slightly different things and yeah, have yeah, different yeah. approaches. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's a little bit different f about this program from what we were doing um, previously is that we talk about active. Um, it's not just physical, physically active and socially active, but really like giving life meaning, yeah. having a purpose. And so we do that through, this is the, the three prong of volunteerism, employment, civic engagement, so you know, important. pick one, pick them all. Yeah. So like for instance, for Marsha, that's the civic engagement is her passion. Right. Yeah. You know, we're trying to encourage people like find your passion and be actively engaged. But in what about the heart. jobs now? You, you mentioned in the outline yes. that, that there are jobs here. Right. And jobs are good for you. Because give you an identity yes, yes. Uh, you know inherent in every job is this this is somebody at the other end who wants you to be there yes. <laughs> who cares that That's you are alive related you know? to having uh, purpose yeah. so how do you get people jobs so before we go there can I just mention that the reason why the three pillars the employment the volunteerism and the um, and the civic engagement are part of the foundational pieces that we work on in our programs is because there are hundreds of studies that demonstrate that when, when individuals, seniors or otherwise, are involved in these kinds of activities, it brings about the thing called meaningful life. So, and we also know that in the employment area, there are many seniors that can use the extra income. What kind of jobs? Um, we're partnering with uh, elite parking. and um, Parking attendants. Uh, no, it's, a, it's that and it's more. And what they have found, and maybe you can tell them the story of, um, you know, your conversation with Ryan about employees. Yeah, so we have, we have this partnership with Elite, but we also are in the process of developing partnerships with other employers. And, you know, unemployment in Hawaii is quite 
low right now. And a lot of these hard companies that staff, are growing yeah. are hard. It's difficult for them to get staff. And some of the, um, when they were going to, I guess when HR and Elite and some of these other companies we've been talking to were um, evaluating, like, who are some of our really star, you know, dependable employees that we would like to emulate? And a lot of what they found was it was some of their older employees. Yeah. And um, although, you who know, knows like... Who knows this car? Who knows yeah, this? They understand. Exactly. They've been we'll come at 9 o'clock and work until 5. They are dependable. We, we only have uh, three minutes yeah. left, but I, I wanted to ask you the other side, the flip side yeah, to this sorry. whole discussion. And that is, you know, you have the community center, mm -hmm. offers a great mitzvah uh, for the kapuna. Um, and you have you guys who offer energy, leadership, mm -hmm. and a smorgasbord, a buffet. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, so I mean, it, this, this is a wonderful thing and hard to do, but huge benefits for the people involved, huge right. benefits. Gives them quality of life. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, when you get older, sometimes it's hard to hold on to that. And sometimes the, you know, the frailties of age, the realities of aging, you know, slip in and people, you know, they may lose their ability to participate. Right. How, how, it's a hard question, how do you handle that? How does your organization handle that? Oh. You're offering these things and members, I mean, active mm -hmm. members one day, maybe they can't be active. How do you handle that? So we do have case coordination and case management services. What, person by person? Yes, that we work one-on-one -on -one yes. with people for those who are losing, in danger of losing their independence, becoming frail, right. um, becoming isolated. Yeah. So we do have that side of the program. What do you do and part of it is to keep them from being isolated, right? Mm -hmm. To even no matter what, even if they can't do all of the mm -hmm. things, but it, to keep them engaged, to keep them from being isolated, yeah. because if they become isolated, that's when the health issues that's right, come. Yeah. So the idea is to keep them engaged, to keep them a part of the community, and making them feel that they are of value. We have, a, the American society is a throwaway society and they throw away old people. <laughs> well, they do. Right, right. And so, right. you know, so. They're what, not going to do that to you guys. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the idea is to keep them engaged, to keep them mm -hmm. feeling like they are of value. It is awful that people, employers, uh, throw them away when they have amassed this huge volume of knowledge mm -hmm. and experience yes. uh, and, and good temperament I, and, and, good all temp that. and all of that so the idea that of all of these put together keeps them from being isolated keeps them so what I get out of this is that the program is intended to keep them active because your quality of and life indeed, day to yes. day is yes. better yes. but there's another element also and that is, if you're active, you tend to stay active. Mm -hmm. If you're active, mm -hmm. you exactly. tend to stay engaged. It's a cycle. It's a, a exactly. spiral. Yes. Yes. At the and end of the day, you live longer. Right. Exactly. And exactly. every day is better. And what better quality are, of What's life. not to like about that? Well, that's the, the direct connection between the uh, qualities of well-being and uh, longer life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to have to leave that. it. We're going to have to that, leave can it I there. Can I say just one little thing? Well, we're over time, but okay. go ahead. I want to say For all of these people, say the Lord's Prayer, right? I'm not going to preach. But there's one sentence in the prayer that says, give us this day our daily bread. Not tomorrow. This day. And if we take that and live this day, because that was the gift we asked for, that's what we got, we can have a lot more this days. That's a great closing <laughs> and a great point. Um, that is Marsha Joyner. Uh, she's a contributor and participant <laughs> in the Thriving After 50 program, and the, uh, the chair of that program is here too, and, and that's, uh, to get your title right now, Merle Okino O'Neill, uh, also the Thriving After 50, and, and, and the, 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 the auntie the president. <laughs> who it takes is. care of all of this, <laughs> okay, <laughs> is Carolyn Hayashi. She's the president, uh, executive director, president of president. the Waikiki uh, Community Center. Thank yes. you so much, all of you, Thank you, and for what you do. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That is a real pleasure. <laughs>